Welcome to the history of the DC Universe, aka Patters. We talk about this a lot, and we are getting right into it because... And I'm missing issue 5 of Legends. Guys, where's my issue 5 of Legends? Okay, what what are these three books here? What's the stack? What's the reading order? What's the significance? If you guys haven't noticed, we went right from intro to the drawing table because... This is what's lost in comics now. <laughs> this, this is what is lost. This is what DC Comics and Jim Lee and all of those guys, all of those cats, this is what they let fade away. Let's get into Crisis on Infinity Earths. I apologize, I only have two issues of Crisis. I only have issues three and four. Crisis, just off of the bat, okay? Crisis is the greatest drawn effort in comic book history. Greatest illustration effort. Period. It made George Perez. Not only. A legend in his own time. But it also. Solidified the style. Of DC Comics. Later to be re-solidified. With John Byrne. But George Perez is the one that came in. We can talk about what Marvel's doing. At this point. This and that. June 1986 here, guys. We're 1985, okay? We're going to go into the unification of the DC Universe. This is where all of the properties, all the ideas that DC acquired throughout the years, deca decades worth of mergers and acquisitions, it coagulates. It becomes a giant company. They go through publishing hell a few times. Almost go through shutting, shuttering their, their shop twice. But through all of that, they consolidate it. And they consolidate everything through Marv Wolfman and George Perez coming in at an absolute hot level to pull it. They, they mash all the universes together, Okay. They mash everything together and it becomes one cohesive unit. One cohesive timeline, one continuity. So with Crisis, we get the history of the DC Universe. See, and look, same name, guys. Marv Wolfman, George Perez. I profiled this years ago on Twitter. Uh, yeah, we get a Alex Ross cover, right? Alex Ross doing his thing. At, during this time... DC dropped giant size slipcase deluxe editions of Crisis on Infinity Earths that included a fold out Alex Ross poster that depicted all the events of Crisis. It's it's one amazing feat. If it's Alex Alex Ross's greatest work, so they did Crisis of Infinity Earths, and then they, yeah, the great minds of DC. Now keep in mind. I wanted to show, showcase this real quick. 1984, Swamp Thing, Teen Titans, Blue Devil, Atari Force. Uh, yeah, Amazing Heroes, giant publication, Wizard Magazine for the day. This is what people voted as the best, best box. And for Marvel, we have Fantastic Four, X-Men, Doctor Strange, Power Pack. Four. So, J John Sable, no one talks about John Sable, no one talks about American Flag anymore. We'll profile both of these on this channel. I'm focusing on having Thursday or Fridays being uh, more titles like these two. Potentially Fridays. So the great minds of DC, they get together and they start to retell everything. Look, look, we get Black Adam. Black Adam's connected to the Scarab. Again. New Gods. All of the mythology characters, the guardians, the history, the historical characters, right? Flying Ace, Krypton, uh, Liberty, right? I forget this guy. This dude was awesome. But we explain it all and we set up the timeline, right? So now all the books that come after this, well, here we go. We, we have a template and we have all the ideas from all the other companies that we acquired. They're all right here. 
Let's focus on Superman, Batman. Look at, I love this Robin pose by Perez. And if you guys, if you guys think in, in the age of digital art, <laughs> where you literally can pencil and ink on your screen in a quarter of the time it took George Perez to do this, and we're not in a production boom, we're not in a quality boom, just of what our eyeballs can handle today. It goes to show you how lazy the artists are today. They're lazy and they're they're unknowledgeable. Because we look at George Perez right here. Like this pose too. Like hacked, 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 hacked. But we get it all. We get everything. Uh, Walt Simonson's main hunter. We will highlight that. Look, Peacemaker or uh, Peacekeeper. Like he's involved, but doesn't become significant until modern time. Teen Titans, and again, too, we get just a little bit of an emphasis on Shazam here. Vigilante, uh, maybe the best of all of these books and characters during this time. We will highlight his 50 issue run, by the way, BTW. But here it is the history of the DC Universe. One day, we will do a giant series where we'll go through every issue of Crisis, every issue of the history of the DC Universe, John Burns' Main of Steel, which kind of goes right here, and then Legends. So what is Legends? Legends is, we'll call it the, the in-continuity, company-wide, hero, villain, new concept, introduction crossover here. We have... We have wonderful Billy Batson right here working for a new station. But this is the reintroduction. Here's Amanda Waller. The reintroduction of the universe with ideas, new ideas, new concepts, so on and so forth. Okay. Len Wein, RIP. He's no longer with us. John Ostrader, too, who uh, really was hot. During uh, after this for Suicide Squad. And we have John Byrne. And Carl uh, Penciler. Carl Kessler. Inker. But these are the minds of the time. Getting together to fix DC Comics. And they're giving DC Comics. A big enough adventure. Like look at the cover for issue 6 here. How many of these characters. I mean honestly speaking. How many of these characters matter right now? Suicide Squad's right here, guys. So a lot of cool ideas came up in Legends. Shazam's gone, like, no Shazam, no Doctor Fate. Uh, they killed the public image of the Flash. No one, no one's going to care about Guy Gardner. No one cares about Blue Beetle. Uh, it's it's really. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Trinity. But you see that they're avoiding that with this, right? If this cover was drawn today, it would be like this. You would have Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and then all these all these other characters like floating behind them. But we get this focus on Dark Side. This is where Dark Side and the new gods become the first thing that the heroes have to deal with. Uh, this is something that's repeated, even up up to the, the Zack Snyder Justice League movie. We have a focus on new legacy, new iterations. We have Ronald Reagan over here, right? So it's a lot of these ideas. I mean, look at look at, right? How many of these characters are meaningless right now? It's it's insane. But this is this is what happens. When, look look we have uh, yeah, the coming of Doctor Fate. Right here, we learned the rules of the helmet. Up until this point, the, the rules of the helmet were not very clear in DC continuity. See, and Phantom Stranger, like rocking and rolling. Phantom. So a little bit of there being an ominous, that you saw this in New 52 with that Pandora character. This is also the template, uh, an ominous character that kind of ushers, that acts as an avatar for the formation of what would be a team or the Justice League. Let me see, look, see, like the new beginning. AKA Patters. If we care about the history of 
the comics and everything. I, I this this is what matters, and this ends with Flashpoint. So everything you see here starts it starts with Crisis and it ends with Flashpoint because Flashpoint leads right into the New Fifty Two, and all of the all of this continuity gets washed away. So if you imagine some of the readers that made a time investment into like Crisis and you spent thirty years reading it, loving it. Uh, just for New 52 to tell you that none of it mattered. Continuity counts. Now, I'm not talking about recons. I'm not talking about corrections. I'm not talking about even going into some of the individual runs and removing issues and saying that was a what if or an Elseworlds. I get that. But the overall continuity, the baseline of the... I mean, we have a like Cosmic Boy here too. Got a miniseries. Gone. Right? No one cares about him. Um, this is the beginning of a deeper DC thread because 85, we get crisis and 86, 87, we get the creative boom of DC comics. Uh, Marvel's creative boom really was the sixties and we wait two more decades to get something similar for a mainstream comic book title and, and we got it. Uh, yeah. So guys, just one, a little bit of a preview, a little bit of a history lesson. More, excuse me, more to come, trust me. All right, I just wanted to show this off real quick. This is my Man of Steel stack. Uh, ever since I was kind of like buying comics, rebuilding the uh, collection, these are all like either dollar bin. I think I was able to get a set for about 20 bucks. We get the focal point, right? Man of Steel just solidifies Superman in the absolute core, the absolute center of the DC universe. So prior, right, we get Crisis. We get our history lesson here. We go into Legends, and this is our scope. It should be noted that even characters like Blue Beetle here, guys like Guy Gardner, even Shazam, Teen Titans... All of these characters got, uh, they got attention. Flash, new series. Wonder Woman, new series. Batman, new series. Well, new direction. It was a true reboot. The greatest reboot that we've ever seen. More to come, guys. More to come, more to come. But I, I just felt bad. I wanted to at least show off what, what to expect with Man of Steel, too.